this episode of Remote Trigonometry, we will be working with the Law of Sines. If you do not have a right triangle, you cannot rely on the right triangle definitions of sine and cosine and tangent or Pythagorean theorem. But the Law of Sines and Law of Cosines come in to assist. When you're working with the Law of Sines and you're given an angle on its opposite side, you might have two possible triangles that fit that information, or there might be one or there might be none. But start with the assumption that there are two possible triangles. And what you wanna do is you wanna make a chart with 12 boxes in the chart. Half the chart will be for triangle one, half the chart will be for triangle two. For this particular problem, we were given a side length of 4.5 being opposite an angle of 50 degrees. We were also given a side length of 5.5 and we were not initially given the angle that's opposite side B. So I'm filling in the chart initially with the information that I'm given. So 4.5 for side A, 50 degrees for angle A, and 5.5 for side B. And I'm assuming that I might have two possible triangles. The law of sine states that the ratio of sine of an angle to its opposite side is always the same no matter what angle you've chosen in the triangle. So sine of 50 degrees divided by 4.5 should equal sine of B divided by 5.5. Multiplying both sides by 5.5, I will get 0.9363 for this calculation, and that is equal to sine of B. So then doing inverse sine of 5.5 times sine of 50 divided by 4.5, I get 69.44 degrees. So again, 5.5 times sine of 50 divided by 4.5 was the 0.9364 number that I had on the paper. And inverse sine of that number is giving me 69.44 degrees. But remember, sine is the y coordinate as we move around the unit circle. So there's always a second angle that's less than 180 degrees that has the same sine value as the original angle that your calculator gave you. And by the way, we're working in degrees, so your calculator should be in degree mode. Um, you know, anytime you're working with a shape, you're most likely going to be working with degrees, but here we're definitely working in degrees because we're told degrees. So what I'm pointing out is that sine of 69.44 is equal to sine of 110.56 Notice we get the same value for sine for both of those angles. Where I obtained 110.56, this angle here has to be the same size as the 69.44 angle. So take a half circle or 180 degrees and subtract the first answer and you'll get the second angle that has the same sine value. So 180 minus 69.44 is where we obtained 110.56. So angle B might be 69.44, it might be 110.56. So I'm filling in my chart assuming that I have two triangles. Now to get angle C, we know that all three angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So take 180 and subtract the known angle of 50 degrees and then subtract 69.44 degrees and we will obtain 60.6 degrees. I guess I rounded the 69.44, so 60.6 degrees. So angle C could be 60.6 degrees, but if B is 110, then that leaves 19.4 degrees as the possibility for angle C. So angle C is 19.4 degrees 
if you assume that angle B was 110.56 or I'll, I'll round it to 110.6 <laughs> so 19.4 degrees well we have shown that there are two possible triangles there's enough space in the triangle to fit a 69.4 degree angle and a 60.6 .6 degree angle as well as a 110.6 degree angle there's enough space for a third angle so to find length C, I will rely on the law of sines. And notice that this ratio um, will be, the ratio statement will be the same whether sine of the angles in the numerator or in the denominator. Since I'm trying to solve for the side length, I think I will rewrite it as 4.5 over sine of 50 is equal to length C over sine of 60.6 .6 degrees. And I want to multiply both sides by sine of 60.6 .6 degrees. And that will give us length C. So we have sine of 60.6 .6 times 4.5 divided by sine of 50. And that is giving me an approximate length of 5.12. So length C is 5.12. If B is, is 69.4 and C is 60.6, .6, then doing the same to get the side length over here, I take sine of the 110.6 degrees divided by sine of 50 degrees times the 4.5. Okay, I mean, I would set up the same ratio, but it would say 110.6 here instead of 60.6. .6. Oops, you know what? Sorry, C was 19.4. So this should be 19.4 degrees, not the 110. So sine of 19.4 times 4.5 divided by sine of 50 gives me a length of 1.95. So length C might be 1.95. So what is actually going on is that the triangle that's shown here, that's assuming the 69.4 degree angle and the 60.6 .6 degree angle so if I swing this leg out here then this angle here is the 69.4 and this angle here is the 60.6 .6. but I could swing the leg this direction and make a second triangle this is still a 50 degree angle okay like this right here is still a 50 degree angle but this angle will be 19.4 and this angle will be the 110.6 and i rounded the 1.95 up a little bit to two um, when i cut the length so that's how there could be two possible triangles with those lengths the leg could be swung out here or the length could be swung in here. And that's how you're forming your two possible triangles. All right, well, let's look at another example. And here we are given an initial condition of length A is 3.6 and angle A is 76 degrees and length B is 2. So start off assuming that there might be two triangles. So I'm filling in my box with the information that I was given and 76 degrees is opposite the 3.6. I'm looking for angle B. It's opposite length 2 because that's what B is. Multiply both sides by 2. That gives me the decimal 0.5391, 
inverse sine of 0.5391 gives me 32.62 degrees for angle B. So angle B could be 32.62 degrees. But there's always a second angle that has the same sine value. Notice the Y coordinate here matches the Y coordinate here. If I take 180, a half circle, and I subtract 32.62, because this angle has to be the same size as this angle over here, I end up obtaining 147.38. So the other angle that angle B might be is 147.38. So I will fill in. B could be 147.38 degrees. So now let's go about finding angle C. So all three angles have to add up to 180. So take off the 76 degree angle we already know A is. Take off the 32.62 degree angle that we found for angle B. And that gives us 71.38 as the possibility for angle C. So angle C is 71.38 degrees. But we said that angle B might be 147.38 degrees. So take 180 Subtract the 76 degrees that you already know A is, and subtract 147.38 degrees. And if I do that, I take 180 minus 76 minus 147.38, and I get negative 43.38. Wait a minute, angle C can't be a negative angle. A negative angle would mean it's over here in quadrant four, you can't have a negative angle in a triangle, so that's an indication that there's only one possible triangle. We do not have a second possibility. If, you know, another way to look at it, if you add 180, or sorry, if you add 76 to 147.38, you get 223.38. So angle A and angle B together make more than a triangle. That's another way that you could reason it out. So there's no room for a third angle if B is 147.38 and A is 76. We're definitely told A is 76. If this was a possibility for B, there would have to be room for a third angle inside the 180 degrees of a triangle. So no, no second triangle. We still need to find length C though. So I'm going to put 3.6 in the numerator and sine of 76 in the denominator. And that will equal length C over sine of 71.38 degrees, because that's what we found for angle C. And solving that for C, I take 3.6 times sine of 71.38 divided by sine of 76. Okay, I'm taking this equation and multiplying by the denominator, and I get 3.52 if we round up a little bit for length C. So length C would be 3.52 if you solve this equation for C. All right, so we will put that in here. C is 3.52. All right, well, let us look at another example. Also, you can kind of, if, if you look at our situation here, um, I made this arbitrary length, but here's length B and A was 3.6, there's only one way to situate this if that stays 76 degrees, which we're told A is 76 degrees. I can't turn this 
this way and make another triangle if this stays length 3.6. So the 2 is fixed, the 3.6 is fixed, and the 76 degrees is fixed. You can see there's only one possible triangle. I can't swing the leg both ways. All right, looking at a third example, we are given that A is 2.5, its opposite angle is 110 degrees, and length B is four. Assume there's two triangles, because if there's not, it'll come out in the work. So I've made a 110 degree angle, and this is length B of four, and this is length C. Um, we're told that A is 2.5, but A is opposite the 110 degrees, so A is over here. And I kind of just made this arbitrary because at this point we don't know what length C is. So doing our calculation using law of sines, we have sine of 110 is opposite the 2.5. That should be equal to sine of B over length 4. Multiply both sides by the denominator to solve for sine of B. And when I take 4 times sine of 110 divided by 2.5, I get 1.5035. And wait a minute, something is fishy because sine is the y coordinate on the unit circle. And so y can't be any bigger than 1 because the highest y gets is at 90 degrees and it's equal to 1. Otherwise, sine is 0 or some number between 0 and 1. Um, Sine can also be negative, but when you're working with a triangle, um, you're not going to work with the angles that would make sine negative. So we can kind of just recognize that sine should be between zero and one, and we got a value greater than one. So it's not possible to have a sine greater than one. And notice I'm double checking, I typed in the right thing. So that just tells me that there's no possible triangle. I also can see there's no possible triangle, because if this is a 110 degree angle and this has to be 4 and A is only 2.5, there's no way it's going to reach to form a triangle. So no triangle whatsoever. No possible triangle. So like I recommend, just assume there are two triangles and make your chart. And if there are two triangles, you're all ready to fill everything in to find both triangles. If there's only one, as you're trying to find the second triangle, you'll figure out that there can't be a second triangle. And if there's no triangle, it comes out right away. You notice there are no triangles.